California's housing crisis has reached an unprecedented level, forcing residents from multiple cities to resort to some extreme measures, including finding space in some of the smallest spaces. Take a look. Some people are willing to sleep in these small pods. They're three and a half feet wide, four feet tall, just big enough, as you can see, to squeeze in a twin-sized mattress. But the rent for one of these pods is part of the appeal. It's really a steal compared to the price of an apartment. Right now, the average home price in San Francisco is $1.2 million. But the going price for one of these small sleeping pods starts at seven to $900 per month. It's drawing a lot of attention. Since these pods though became so popular, some of the sites are facing tickets from the city for code violations. So let's bring in right now one of the masterminds behind this idea, co-founder James Stallworth of Brownstone Shared Housing. First of all, James, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, are your pods part of this group uh, that's not up to code? I want to start with that since that's kind of like the newest peg of the story. Yeah, so really what we're facing there is um, not an issue with the pods actually. It has everything to do with the fact that we converted the place from, it used to be a bank and now we're housing 28 people. So the city just wants to make sure that we file the proper permits, change of use permits and uh, make it up to code that way. But it has nothing to do with the pods themselves. So the pods themselves are okay, but since these code violations are in place, what happens right now for all the people who are sleeping there, staying there, are they forced to go elsewhere as these changes and fixes are being made? No, so there's really no construction or anything necessary. The okay. building will continue as usual. We just have to make sure it's classified properly. So filing the permits. Meanwhile, everyone will continue staying in the house. All right, James. So we're taking a look at the picture. So to kind of explain this a little bit more, as I see right there, there's like this communal shared living space, and then there are the individual sleeping pods. Uh, talk about where the idea for these even came from, and, and can people actually live there or are they strictly there for certain hours only let's say the sleeping hours it's really just people sharing a house um, we just made a bed that's more comfortable for more people to share a home and that's really what brings the price down so when more people are able to split the cost comfortably you can charge less than if everyone for example had their own bedroom um, but these beds are just part of it you also get to live in a community in a very large space, like our San Francisco place is 5,500 square feet, has a lot of common space and places where people can work and relax and spread out. Um, so it's really just sharing a nice house. All right, so so I'm just very intrigued by this. I, I'm not claustrophobic, claustrophobic, but I'm sure that people who are uh, may not like this, but can you like enclose yourself within the actual pod or does one side of it always stay open? Yeah, I'm actually claustrophobic myself. So we designed these to be comfortable for Americans. Uh, they're four feet tall and that's really gives you a nice um, volume inside the bed. And yes, those privacy curtains close fully and it's a really comfortable private space. All right, and so logistically, how does this work? So if people are kind of sharing this home, where do they keep their stuff? You know, because some people certainly have sticky fingers. Yeah, so we don't just automatically accept everyone to live in the house. We do a screening process. We talk to each person individually, face-to-face -face on Zoom, and really get to know people's personalities. And that's worked extremely well. We haven't had any issues with theft or anything like that. And people's space is labeled for them, so everyone gets the same amount of space throughout the house. All right, so James, my last question for you. I mean, this really is a genius idea, especially in a city that is notoriously so expensive, but you know, so many American cities right now are so expensive. What does that say about our housing market when you know people are kind of having to live communally, you know, some by choice, but but some forced because it's just so expensive otherwise? I think it's just a sign that we need to think more creatively. We need to think beyond just constructing units because when you construct the unit is going to cost so much that only a certain type of person can live there. So our, our Pods are just an example of where you can think creatively and solve the problem for some people. And you're exactly right. It's not for everyone. And so we just need more creative solutions for housing. Well, James, I have to say, uh, this is certainly a very creative solution. Next time I'm in San, I'm in San Fran, I definitely would love a tour. James Stallworth, 
Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.